President Putin's staunchest critic, Alexei Navalny, has been sent to prison for three and a half years. A Moscow court found Navalny guilty of violating the terms of his probation while he was in Germany, recovering from a poisoning attack. The money laundering case dates back to 2014 that Navalny calls politically motivated. He insists that the due process was crudely violated during his arrest and he described the decision as a travesty of justice. The hearing was attended by Navalny's wife, Yulia Navalnaya, as well, and several other supporters. Navalny made a heart gesture as he stood in the defendant's cage. In a fiery speech to the country, Navalny said that he was jailed because of Putin, and Putin is concerned about him as a political rival. Kremlin refers to Navalny as a troublemaker without popular support. Reports say that Navalny could be heard mocking Putin during this hearing. Navalny's lawyers have said they would appeal against the ruling. One of the lawyers said that he would spend only two years and eight months in jail because of the time he has already spent under house arrest. We are going to appeal and we are going to advise Committee of Ministers of European Council, which handles with and monitors the execution of verdicts of the European Court of Human Rights, that Russia did not execute the European Court's rulings. As far as I understand and according to some explanations from them in Internet, they wanted to attend the court hearing themselves to observe if rights were kept and to see how everything goes. Navalny's allies called for his supporters to protest against this ruling. Protesters took to the streets soon after the verdict was announced. They gathered on St. Petersburg's main avenue and in central Moscow. Helmeted riot police could be seen grabbing demonstrators and putting them in police vehicles. Russian police have detained more than 1,400 protesters. Authorities had arrested Navalny as he arrived from Germany after recovering from a poisoning attack. His supporters have been staging mass protests since Navalny's arrest. On Monday, a Moscow court ordered Yulia Navalny to pay a fine of 20,000 rubles, that is $265. She was accused of violating protest regulations after she attended a demonstration in Moscow. Navalny joined the protest despite unprecedented security measures in place. She was quickly detained. The U.S. State Department says that they are reviewing what actions can be taken in response to the sentencing of Navalny. We are going to look very carefully uh, at the deteriorating human rights uh, situation in Russia, uh, what has happened with Mr. Navalny specifically, what has happened with the mass detentions of those who have uh, bravely taken to the streets um, in the aftermath of Mr. Navalny's uh, arrest. Uh, and of course, all of that uh, we will account for in uh, determining an appropriate policy course. Russian affairs expert Dr. Marcus Papadopoulos is joining us live from London. Dr. Marcus, thank you so much for giving us your time. Welcome to Vion. Now, many Western nations, including the United States of America, European Union, had demanded the release of Alexei Navalny. But with this verdict, with Navalny being sent to three and a half years in jail, Russian authorities have shown that they have little regard for such uh, warnings by the West, isn't it? Alexei Navalny's standing in Russian society is negligible, and I will explain why that is. Firstly, contrary to Navalny's assertions and the assertions of his backers in Washington, London and Brussels, Navalny is not a political figure. He is a political activist. Secondly, Navalny's neoliberal convictions, which encompass politics, economics and culture are regarded by the overwhelming majority of the Russian population as 
alien, as completely unsuitable to Russia. And thirdly, and most important of all, the Russian people regard Alexei Navalny and regard him correctly as an agent of the West, as someone who is backed by the Americans, the British and the Europeans, someone who is intent on returning Russia to how it was under Boris Yeltsin in the 1990s, namely a country which was subservient to the West, a country which was dependent on IMF loans, a country which whose uh, industries, the state industries and natural resources had been taken over by Western businessmen. So those reasons, in particular the third one, account for why Alexei Navalny's standing in Russian society is absolutely negligible. Right. Dr. Marcus, you say his standing in uh, Russian politics is absolutely negligible, but how do you explain then over a hundred million views for the video that Team Navalny put on YouTube as far as allegations, his allegations against Vladimir Putin is concerned and the uh, billion dollar mansion uh, near southern Russia. There are more than a hundred million views for that video on YouTube. There is popular support as far as Team Navalny is concerned on social media. How do you explain thousands of people that took to the streets over multiple weekends in Russia? More than 5,000 people were detained on a single day. So what does that show? Well, since when has YouTube been a measurement for public opinion? in Russia. After all, YouTube is a Western platform and specifically a Western neoliberal platform. Uh, YouTube, the, uh, the amount of views that the video uploaded to this platform by Navalny has been watched by people in the Western world, not in the Russian Federation. Secondly, Russia has a population of approximately 150 million people. The uh, protests we saw in Moscow and in a few other Russian cities were minimal in terms of the amount of people who turned out. Secondly, the Russian police made arrests and correctly made arrests because those protesters became violent. They became violent towards the police. They became violent towards uh, people walk into shops, people walk into their homes, people walk in to work. So even if a few thousand people turned up in Moscow and other cities in Russia, that is absolutely negligible when you take into consideration that Russia has a population of 150 million people. As I said just now, Alexei Navalny is an agent therefore Right. Uh, Dr. Dr. Marcus, uh, we are having a slight trouble with your audio at the moment. We'll try and reconnect in about 30 seconds from now. But these are visuals from outside the courtroom in Moscow where Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny was sentenced to 3.5 years in jail. And uh, thousands of people had gathered outside the court uh, as the verdict was being delivered, many of them were detained by the Russian police. Over the weekend, Russia also saw massive protests. Thousands of people took to the streets in Moscow and other cities across Russia. And there were 5,000 people who had been detained by Russian police. Dr. Marcus is back with us. Doctor, one final question to you. How do you see the relationship between Russia and the West going forward now that Alexei Navalny has been jailed? Now, we know that America and the European Union had been considering additional sanctions against Russia. Uh, is there any concern in Kremlin regarding that? Uh, let me just clarify something very quickly. There were no massive protests in Russia in support of Alexei Navalny. Any Russian person living in the Russian Federation would testify to that. Now, turning to relations between Russia and the West in the context of Navalny, well, the relationship between uh, the West and Russia is at an atrocious level. Why? Because the West is incensed at how Russia, under the leadership of Vladimir Putin, 
is again a superpower and is again challenging Western global hegemony. Russia defe ultimately defeated the Western objectives in Syria and Western objectives in Venezuela. That is why there is a terrible um, uh, relationship between the West and Russia, because the West wants Russia to be how it was during the 1990s under Boris Yeltsin. The fact that a Russian court of law, not the Russian authorities, a Russian court of law has found Navalny guilty and given him a custodial sentence will have no bearing on the relationship between the West and Russia, because at the core of the problematic relationship, to put it mildly, between the West and Russia is the West's refusal to accept that Russia is once again a great power, that Russia is in control of its own destiny, that Russian independence and sovereignty has been restored and upheld by Vladimir Putin. That is the reason why the relationship between the West and Russia is at such a Dr. Marcus, thank you so much for joining us on Vion and giving us your perspective on the sentencing of Alexei Navalny as he has been sent to 3.5 years in prison.